Hey romance readers, welcome back to Adora R. I hope everyone's having a fantastic Saturday. I know I said I was going to post another video this week. Well, the week is not over yet. It's just Saturday. We're still on this week. So I decided to come today and get this video um, out to you all. But I was trying to think. I've been thinking all week, what could I do a video on? I need to post another video. And I was upstairs um, going through my books because I'm trying to... Uh, get rid of some of my books uh, that I'm not going to read again so I'm, I'm going to donate some of them to the library and some to the Goodwill and I kept coming across Holoquin a lot of I've, I got a lot of Holoquin romances that I collected back in the day I used to get the subscription I think I meant the subscription I think I mentioned it on here before that I used to get Holoquin historical subscription and the Holoquin presents a uh, subscription so I got a lot of Holoquin I was like let me go through these and uh and donate some of these to the uh, library or to uh, Goodwill and I was like that's what I'll do my video on today is another tribute I've done a tribute to Holoquin um, before on this channel so I'm going to do another one but this is all going to be about historical so if you're not a historical reader uh, many of you know that I love historical and I read a lot of historical most most, most of my books are historical um, so if you're not a historical reader this this video is not going to be for you and I'll say goodbye to you now but keep reading those romances and come back and check out my channel again um, next week uh, when I'll probably be talking about uh, some other books uh, but probably some historical included in there but it, they won't they won't all be historical so I'll see you later if you're not a historical uh, lover um, but for you historical lovers out there uh, let's get started uh, first I have up here is Eleanor and the Marques uh, Marquis, I never could pronounce that. And it's Jane Wilby, and it's Holocaust. And I put this on here because it's Holocaust Historical Number One. And I was like, "Wow, you got the the first book." I can't even remember. I I remember buying most of my books when I was young from the grocery store. It was a grocery store. If you're from the South, you know what I'm talking about. It was a grocery store called Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, old Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> you can't hardly find those grocery stores anymore. Every once in a while, you'll run across one. But yeah, I purchased this from there. And um, and this one, when I first started reading, I mostly used to my first uh, reading experience was with um, what was her name? I can't think of. Uh, but she did Holocaust. I mean, she didn't do Holocaust, but she did historicals. Oh, dog, I cannot think of what her name was, the first book I ever started reading. But it, the first book I ever started reading romance was, it was a historical. Barbara Cartland. Yes, she the one got me started reading uh, romance and historical. The first book I ever read was by Barbara Cartland, and it was a historical. And I've been reading historicals ever since. So, yeah, it's all her fault. <laughs> and, uh... When once I start reading her, I just look. I just start reading, going through books like it wasn't nothing, and that's when I start picking up the Holocaust historical. And um, this was one of them. And I'm not going to read the back of it because it's not a synopsis to me. It's just uh, like an excerpt from the actual book. Uh, so I'm not going to read it. Uh, but it'll tell you right there. It's about Eleanor and her Marquis and her Marquis. Yeah, how you pronounce that? Yeah. <laughs> and look, back then the book was a dollar and fifty cent. Yeah, what are they doing it at now? Especially for a new book, a dollar fifty? No, you have to go to a used store to get that. And there you go. Look at that cover. I like how they did that cover. They're actually, they actually um, used to. I guess they used to have hire artists to paint the uh, actual cover because most of them were look look like this, look like it had been painted or whatever. But now you know everybody take photos and fix them up and you can't even tell if they've been painted or what but I, I like how that's done nice cover I like the um, fireworks there if you can see beautiful cover and it's, it's still in good shape I I think I mentioned on here I like to keep my books in good shape and it's, it's really nice to be and when was this published let me see uh, it was published in 1977 and that's Eleanor and the Marquis Jane will be. Uh, next up, I have Deborah Simmons. I've mentioned this book on here before. I'm not going to go back over it again. And it's Taming the Wolf. And I think this was uh, like in a series. Um, it was about the brothers, um, the Burge brothers. And I think it was five or five or seven brothers. Uh, and she did one on each brother. And she's a favorite author of mine, Deborah Simmons, Taming the Wolf. Excellent, excellent read. If you want to check it out. Um, but I, I'm not going to go read the back of it because like I, I'm gonna go, I got quite a, 
few books over here so I'm just gonna go through these uh, if I see one that uh, I think I haven't uh, showed on here before I will read the back of it um, but this is Deborah Simmons a favorite author of mine next I have another one by Deborah Simmons this is the Vicar's Daughter excellent excellent read all of these are my keepers so um, I'm not gonna keep saying excellent read but if I'm showing it on here it was check it out uh, the Deb Deborah Simmons the Vicar's Daughter I think I have three more books on here that I want to show you by Deborah Simmons uh, like I said she was a favorite author she is a favorite author of mine um, next I have Silent Heart by Deborah Simmons I'll read the back of this one because I think I, I showed y'all this one before um, caught in the madness that gripped her homeland Gab Gabrielle knew that keeping her head meant keeping her secret there were few people she could trust yet she found herself drawn to Alexander Vester a man who silent surely guarded secrets of his own Alexandra Mutin Alexandra Alexandra Mutinous had served him well until the appearance of Gabrielle St. Clair. The woman was beguiling, loving, and innocent and consumed by a need to find her father that threatened to place her in danger to er at every turn. And that's Silent Heart by Deborah Simmons. Excellent read. Uh, this also by Deborah Simmons. Both of these last two were by Deborah Simmons and they like a little series because this is on the sister and this is on the brother. And the sister name was Ashley DeLacy. I think I mentioned this on here before so I'm not going to read that one. Uh, this is The Devil's Lady. And this one is about her brother. Uh, his name is Nicholas DeLacy. And this is Maiden Bride by Deborah Simmons. So those all... I highly, highly recommend all of these um, by Deborah Simmons. And if you haven't read uh, her, uh, check her, check out some of her writing. She's a, you won't be disappointed. She's an excellent, excellent writer. Um, next, next I have up is uh, Lynn Stone, The Arrangement. Also, uh, excellent book. Uh, I'll read a little bit of this. Which was the true Jonathan Chadwick, the childlike innocent or the sophisticated cynic who despised society? Whatever the man mysteries, Catherine Wainwright was determined to uncover them, especially when her incessant questions uncovered a passionate soul that she found herself helpless to resist. Jonathan Chadwick swore there could not exist a more maddening woman than Catherine Wainwright, the cheeky writer for an out outrageous column sheet seemed hell-bent on destroying him and the desire that flared between them was becoming impossible to ignore excellent excellent read Lynn Stone the arrangement uh, I probably oh my goodness I probably have some I'm gonna look and see that I have some more books by her because uh, if I don't I'm gonna see um, did she write any more for Holoquin historical and uh, I'll purchase them because, like I said, she was an excellent, excellent writer. But sometimes I think I haven't purchased that writer before, and I go back and buy the book. Look, and I already have it because I got so many books here. I don't know what I have up in here. And I come looking up here, looking for a book, and I be like, I already purchased this before. <laughs> yeah, I be doing too much. But this is The Arrangement by Lynn Stone. Next, I have Michelle Stiles, The Gladiator Honor. This was excellent, excellent, excellent read. I read a little bit of this. A hardened soul into slavery. A hardened survival of more than a dozen gladiatorial combat. Valens' raw masculinity fueled many women's sexual fantasy. He is outside polite society and Roman noble and Roman noble woman Julia Antonio knows she should have nothing to do with a man who is little more than a slave. So when I read that he was like a gladiator and she was a no noble woman, I was like, I'm sold on this book. And this is Michelle Styles. She's another excellent writer. If you haven't tried out Michelle Styles, you need to. Excellent, excellent writer. And this is the Gladiator Honor. Oh, let me see. When it, I forgot to tell you when these books were published. I'm sorry. When is this published? This was, this has been too long. It was, uh, well, yeah. It's in the 2000, 2006. And this one was, I'll just do these two. I won't go back and do the other one. Uh, this was 1997. Next, I have another excellent writer, Julia Justice, The Wedding Gamble. I think I got this, I bought this book again, like I mentioned on here before. I always buy two if I really, really enjoy them. Uh, so I had, I got this twice. It's The Wedding Gamble. 
Um, but I love Julia Justice. She's an excellent, excellent writer too. I'll read a little bit of this. Sarah Wallingford would do her duty, even if that meant putting herself on the marriage mark during a London season she could ill afford and did not desire. Now ironic circumstances had wed her to the compelling Marquise of Egermere, a fabled gangster who had awakened passion she was unabound not to express. And that's Julia Justice, The Wedding Gamut. I got a lot of Julia Justice too here somewhere. Next, I have Cheryl Rebus, The Prisoner, another excellent writer. I'll read a little bit of this. Upon Captain John Howe escape, upon, look, upon, look, there I go putting words where there, that's not upon, that's Union, yeah. <laughs> Union Captain John Howe escaped a living hell when he tunneled his way out of a Confederate prison camp. Though his ordeal was far from over, now he was saddled with his own prisoners, the sad, stubborn Amanda Douglas, on a journey that would change their lives forever. Excellent read, excellent writer. Check it out. Let me see when this was published. This was done in 1992. Uh, did I tell you when this one was done? Let me see here. And this was 1999. Next I have up is uh, The Gilded Line. I think I mentioned this on here before. Kit Gardner, excellent writer. I'm not going to read the back of this. I think I know I've mentioned this on here before. And this is The Gilded Lion, Kit Gardner. And now, like I mentioned, all of these are Holoquin historical. If you haven't tried her right now, check it out. Excellent writer. I have another one by Kit Gardner, The Stolen Heart. Um, I'll read a little bit of this one. Let's see. Oh, let me tell you when this was published. I cannot remember. Look. Yeah. <laughs> this was 1993. And this was published in 19. This was also published in 1993. She was on a roll. But look what I wrote in there. Let you know that it was very good. Yeah, excellent book. Like I said, she's an excellent writer. And I read a little bit of this. Fool for Love, Jace McAllister had hands with sins in their touch, and Phoebe St. Clair was shamed, wanted, the, wanted those hands all over her. That the man was obviously an outlaw mattered little, for Phoebe was having the time of her life among these wild Americans, if only she could convince Jace to share in the fun. Peaches, even her name was lush and delectable. Of course, she claimed to be Phoebe St. Clair, runaway English heiress, but Jace uncovered, but Jace undercovered Pinkerton operative, Knew a notorious jewel thief when he saw one, and this hellion in peach colored silk and bloomers were more than an eyeful and a handful. And that's Kit Gardner's The Stolen Heart. Next, I have th this, this lady right here, Cheryl St. John. She be writing them cheer jerkers. I think, yeah, I mentioned that before. And this Heaven Can Win. And if you haven't checked, you haven't read any of Cheryl St. John, you need to check it out. Excellent, excellent writer. I'm not going to read the back of this. When I mentioned that she's a tearjerker, I remember that I had mentioned uh, her book before on here. And this was published in 1994. Next, I have Brody Bride, Isabel Whitfield. Another excellent book. And I think I mentioned this one on here before, too. And this was published in 1992. I'm not going to read the back of that, but she's an excellent writer. If you like strong female characters, you probably won't... This this uh, female character in here in this book right here, she probably get on your nerve to begin with because she's a very strong, independent female. And yeah, she got on my nerves some in here, but I still liked her. I still love the book, and I liked her character too. Um, it because I was rooting for him because she was <laughs> she was a hot mess. But anyway, it's Brody Bright, Isabel Whitfield, and the last two are by Carolyn Davidson. I'm sure y'all know who she is. She's an excellent, excellent writer. This is the midwife and the forever man. This is another, she's another, uh, she be another tearjerker. She, uh, yeah, she <laughs> make you shed tears in, in her books. And I read a little bit of this. Widow Father Gar, Gar Sundrum, a Lundrum offer a marriage of convenience had given Lee the chance of a new life for herself caring for his children. Yet what would happen to her newfound happiness when the Stuart farmer learned the horrible secret that had sent her on the run? And this is the midwife. Excellent. It might be some shedding tears in some of these. And this is the Forever Man by Carolyn Davidson. And I read a little of this. Tate Montgomery needed a new life and Jonathan 
Patterson was the kind of woman who could make and Joanna, yeah, look. Yeah, I ain't even gonna go there. And Joanna Patterson was the kind of woman who could make him leave the past behind. But how would he ever convince this reclusive Spencer to open up her heart to him and his boys? And that's The Forever Man by Carolyn Davison. So when I went and pulled these all out, that made me think about, let me go on Holoquin and see, do they have any uh, new Holoquin uh, historical? So, um... I am a member of Holoquin uh, online, and but it's been a while since I've been on there, so I had to go back and find my um, password to get in. And I went on and found the Holoquin Historicals, and they're still doing the Holoquin Historicals. And I, yeah, you know, I had to purchase some books, and they were pretty cheap because they offer you um, you can get once you buy books, you get points. I think I got about nine thousand points now since I purchased those books, uh, but. I was like, dog, I'm going to load up on some book. But no, uh, if you purchase a book or you or you want to get a book with your points, look, th those one book will be eating up your points. It's probably about 1,000 or 2,000 points. It depends on, probably depend on the book and the author. But um, the books, uh, I did purchase some. So I got my, I'm going to do a little haul here. I've already opened it. Uh, I did a little haul and I was like, oh, some of these authors, I haven't, uh, like I said, I haven't read uh, Holoquin in a while, so I so said, let me go on here and purchase me some books. So I purchased four books here. Let me get them out of here. Uh, and I found Terry Brins Brisbane. I, read, I used to read her a lot, and I had to get this one, this claiming his Highland Bride. And uh, let me see that. Oh, and I also want to mention the when I went on there and I purchased these, they gave me a lot of this. They weren't that expensive because they they gave they did give me some discounts um, for purchasing and um, the books, and they were some pretty good discounts that they gave. So um, I didn't spend. I think uh, in total for all of these were sixteen dollars, and and the first one is Terry Brisbane. And I guess this is going to be a series, a Highland feuding series, claiming his Highland bride. I read a little bit of this after discovering her role in her father's plot. This to destroy another clan, uh, Sokor, Sokor Macmillan risked her life to go into hiding. Her safety, her safety relies on her disguise, but she is drawn to a man who could see through her. Unknown to Sokor, Alan Cameron has been sent to track her down. He's a He's, a he's attracted to the woman in disguise. Even after learning her true identity, he can't overcome his instinct to protect her. No matter the danger, he will keep Sorka safe and claim her as his bride. So that sounded inter interesting. And I, I like Terry Brisbane. I got quite a few of her books. And there you go. Uh, Louise Allen, she's another excellent writer. And this is marrying his Cinderella Countess. She, I, I've read quite a few of her books, and I read a little bit of this. Plain, lame Ellie Layton isn't dis, isn't destined to marry. Now that what got me right here because they said she plain, and I guess she got some kind of handicap going on. Uh, you don't get those too many of those here, and the heroine always beautiful, and she's in per, she perfect. But um, when I read that right there, I was like, yep, so. Uh, Ellie Lathan isn't destined for marriage. She's perfectly content being her stepbrother's housekeeper until the high-handed Earl of Hanford arrives with shocking news. Her stepbrother has been killed. Ellie believes the Earl is responsible for her plight and that he is... Sorry about that. Camera went out. Ellie believes the Earl is responsible for her plight and that he is duty-bound to escort her on the journey to her new home. But soon Blake's fighting and unwanted attraction to his argumentative companion. But soon, Blake's fighting and unwanted attraction to his argumentative, argumentative companion. And when she needs her protect, protection, he determined he'll keep her safe by making Ellie his countess. And that's Louise Allen marrying his Cinderella bride. Now, I want to read this one right away. It sounds very interesting. And look at that cover. Nice. Louise Allen. Now, I've never read this woman before. Catherine Tilly. The Captain Disgraced Lady. I've never read her before, This um, any of her writing. Read a little bit of this. When Joanna Milford first encounters Captain Harry Fenton, she finds him arrogant and rude. There's no way she'll fall for his dazzling smile. Her visit to 
Chad come house was always going to prompt questions over her scandalous family. So she's touched when Harry defends her reputation. She's discovering there's more to Harry than she first thought. And that's Catherine Tinley, the Captain Disgraced Lady. And last here, I got a Western. Uh, Catherine Albright. I've never read any of her writings before, any of her books before. And this is The Prairie Doctor's Bride. Read a little bit of this. Raising her son alone, penniless Sylvia Silver, Marks has had enough of being the subject of town gossip. But when her son is seriously injured, she'll do anything to save him. Even kidnap handsome Dr. Nelson Graham. Wedding bells in Oak Grove. And that's Catherine Albright, the, pa the Prairie's Doctor's Bride. So these are my four new books that I purchased from uh, off of uh, Holoquin website. Uh, can't wait to... Well, I can't wait to read this one. So I might take, I'm going to take this one out and put the rest of them with the, uh, to be, in the to be read pile. But that's all I got for now. I hope you all enjoy my little back down memory lane with Holoquin historical here. And, um, that's, like I said, that's all I have for now. Uh, until next week, keep reading those romances and have a great weekend. Bye.